Hi everyone, my name's MJ and I'm an educator at the RISD Museum in Providence, Rhode Island. You can pause this video anytime to think, look, or respond to my questions and activities. On the sixth floor of the RISD Museum, there are two rooms filled with amazing artifacts from ancient Egypt. Most of these objects are thousands of years old. By looking closely at artifacts, you can begin to learn about the lives of ancient Egyptians. Think about if people from the year 4020 could see a few things from the room you're sitting in. Maybe they'd look at the device that you're watching this on or some of the furniture that you're using. They'd learn a lot about how we live today. This is my friend and coworker Gina, who is the curator of ancient art at the RISD Museum. Gina is standing next to Nesman in his coffin. Gina cares a lot about Nesman and helps take care of his mummified body and the coffin which holds and protects him, both physically and spiritually. We're going to watch a video where Gina will tell us more about Nesman and the meaning of some of the writing and symbols on his coffin, which she calls a sarcophagus. There's a lot of information in the video. You can watch it more than once if you want. After we finish watching the video, we'll do more close looking and create some protective artwork of our own. The images on the coffin represent the beliefs of one man named Nesman, who lived a long time ago in Egypt. The coffin itself is covered with images of gods and prayers that would make his journey to the afterlife possible. Many of these hieroglyphs focus on Nesmin's titles and genealogy. We know from the inscriptions on the coffin that Nesmin, during his lifetime, was a priest in the temple of the god Min, the god of fertility. We also know that he was a priest of the god Khonsu, who was a healing and a moon god. It's also covered with images of gods that will serve to protect him in his perilous journey to the afterlife. On the interior of the coffin are images that were meant only for Nesmin. Above him you would see protective creatures of the sky, and below him would have been the goddess Newt protecting him in a perpetual embrace. Another prominent image on the coffin is Nesmin lying on his funerary bier with his Ba spirit in the shape of a bird flying overhead. Below him are four canopic jars which held the internal organs of the deceased. The Egyptians believed that the gods had skin of gold. You'll also notice that his hair is blue. The Egyptians believed that the gods had hair of lapis lazuli, a valuable blue stone. The Egyptians believed that death was not really the end of, of human life. They believed that certain aspects of a person had to be preserved. And one of those things was a person's physical body. And so they mummified people to preserve their bodies and also to make them look like the deities that they hoped to be in the company of in the afterlife. Not everyone in Egypt was mummified. It was only available to the privileged classes of society. And Nesmin was one of those. And Nesmin, I think, would have hoped for an afterlife in the company of the gods that he had served. Wasn't it cool to hear Gina talk about all the different pictures and hieroglyphics on Nesmin's coffin? I learned that Nesmin was a priest while he was alive and his mummy and coffin are decorated with prayers and symbols to protect him in the afterlife. Here's a detail of a symbol on top of Nesmin's mummy near his shoulder. You can notice the frayed edges of the linen fabric he is wrapped in. 
The blue and gold figure we see in the middle of the picture is the god Ra, who has a falcon head. A falcon is a large bird of prey. Above his head is a circle, which is a symbol for the sun, because Ra was a god of the sun. Can you find the god Ra and the symbol for the sun again, painted on the outside of Nesmond's coffin? The sun appears in a lot of ancient Egyptian art. What roles does the sun play in your life? Why is the sun important to human civilizations? Here's a picture of a detail near the bottom of Nesmond's feet. Do you notice what's on top of that big black and white cow? It's Nesmond's mummy. Notice the shape of his coffin, hair, and beard. The cow is the Apis bull, and it represents kingship. It is galloping to the necropolis, or cemetery, with the mummy of Nesmond strapped to its back. Here are more symbols near the top of Nesmond's feet. I see two black jackals, a type of dog with pointy ears, sitting on top of light blue structures. The dogs represent Anubis, a god of mummification and the afterlife, guarding the gates to the afterlife. Here we are actually looking at the inside of Nesmond's coffin. This is the top lid. It looks a little different from the outside of the coffin. I'm noticing the warm orangey brown color of the unpainted wood. I see big, simple outlines of a sun disk with wings, two vultures, and a scarab beetle. They were painted on the inside of Nesmond's coffin, so his body would always face toward them, flying above and protecting him. Can you find two examples of the sun symbol here? The sun is protective and is also a symbol of rebirth. Nesmin would want the sun symbol near his body so that he could be reborn in the afterlife. Here we see more symbols on the side of Nesmin's coffin. I'm noticing that the artist or artists who painted Nesmin's coffin used just a few bold colors for most of it. Blue, green, red, white, and black on a tan background. In ancient Egypt, there were rules about which colors artists should use. So we see these same paint colors in a lot of different artifacts. Near the top left, I see a Wedjat eye, which was a symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. Below the Wedjat eye, I see the white-bodied, black-headed Ram of Mendes, which represents the Ba, or spirit, of the god Osiris, who was the god of the dead. Many ancient Egyptian gods were often shown as part human and part animal, or they could take the forms of either animals or humans. Here we are looking at Nut, goddess of the sky. I notice she has a human body, but she also has bird wings with multicolored feathers. In her hands, she's holding two green ostrich feathers. These feathers are symbols for truth. Did you notice what's on top of her head? Ancient Egyptians believed that Newt swallowed the sun in the evening and gave birth to it every morning. That was how they explained the sunrise and the sunset. We've seen many examples of ancient Egyptian symbols of gods, goddesses, animals, and elements of nature, like feathers and suns. All of these pictures were painted on Nesmond's coffin to protect him. I want you to take a moment to think about an animal or an element of nature that inspires you or might protect you during a challenging time or feeling. For me, recently I've been feeling really inspired by sprouting seeds. It's amazing to me how a big plant that can grow food all comes from one tiny little seed. It reminds me that even though I'm just one person, I can have a big impact in the world by always learning, growing, and helping other people. 
So I decided to create a sprouting seed as my personal protective symbol. I know that in ancient Egypt, just like today, people of all genders wore jewelry. So I made my protective seed symbol as a necklace by carefully poking a hole in my paper for me to put a piece of yarn into. If you don't have string, that's okay. You can place your symbol drawing in a special place after you finish it. I spent about 10 minutes making my protective symbol and I used materials I found in my house. Take some time now to choose and create your own personal protective symbol inspired by art from ancient Egypt. Remember, it can be an animal or a part of nature that inspires you. I hope you've enjoyed looking at Nesman's coffin and his special symbols with me and that you've been inspired to create your own symbols. If you want to post some of your artwork, share your ideas, or ask more questions, we would love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining me, and please stay in touch with us at the RISD Museum. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>